What's good, reader fam? Welcome back to another reading vlog. This week I am determined to read some books. Last week was a fail and I'm really not that happy about it. Realistically, this could also be a fail week for me when it comes to reading because it's Christmas. Here's the part in the reading vlog where I remind you that these vlogs are pre-filmed far in advance. Will I get any reading done? I'm not really sure. I want to, but just because I want to doesn't mean it's gonna happen. The first book I'm hoping to complete is... <laughs> The Copper Gauntlet by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. Started this last week, got like 50 or so pages into it, and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's the adventurous middle grade book that I've been needing recently, and I'm hoping that this continues to deliver that. To simply explain this story, I'll just say it's basically Harry Potter, but backwards. Harry Potter, but flipped on its head. It's got some similarities, but it's also got quite a few differences. And the other book that I'm hoping to get to this week, or at least start, is by far either one of the most hyped or the hyped book of 2018. That being The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. While this is a very hyped book, it's also got so many mixed reviews. It's either a hit for some people or it's a heck of miss for other people. So I'm quite curious to see where I end up after reading this. Will I like it? Will I hate it? We shall see. This story follows these three sisters who were taken captive to the world of fairy. We follow the perspective of our main character Jude and over time she ends up kind of wanting to belong to fairy. In order for her to earn a place at the fairy court, she must defy the prince, whom I believe is probably the cruel prince. That would make sense. I'm hoping this ends up being a win for me. It's unboxing time! Woo, 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 woo. What could it be? What could it be? What could it be? I actually know what it is, so. I'm partnering with HMH Teen on this portion of the video. They sent me this here book, and they're also partnering with me on a giveaway, so hold your britches. Hold on tight to your britches. Get ready, because today I'm gonna be telling you about a giveaway and how you can win the book that's in here. So let's get to unboxing. Ah, 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 ah. Are we gonna do the unboxing or are we just gonna dance with the box? Why not both? <laughs> I've got Mick Dagger here to help me. He hasn't been around in a while, so I thought that I would bring him out. I've still yet to give him a bath. I'm a very bad dagger owner. Let's do some slicing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mick Dagger. You're the best dagger a boy could ever dream of. Helping me get to my books, you're the real MVP. Is anybody else out there? talk to their dagger just me cool <laughs> In the box, we have Courting Darkness by Robin Lefevers. If you're familiar with the Hayes Fair Assassin trilogy, this book is set in that same world. This could be you, but you haven't had a bath, bro. Don't worry, it's not your fault, it's my fault. This book can be read on its own outside of that trilogy, but you will see some familiar faces from that trilogy. This book follows Sabella, who has always been Death's darkest daughter. Originally, she was trained at St. Mordain, but now she's taking on a new mission, and that is to accompany the Duchess to France. And when they get there, things get very messy they are immediately surrounded by enemies. So basically, it's Sabella's job to get them out of this mess. I believe we also follow the story of one of Sabella's fellow novitiates who are disguised and hidden in the French courts. So that storyline and Sabella's storyline end up meeting at some point. And Sabella really needs those two storylines to meet because she needs novitiates to help her take down the enemy that's attacking her and the Duchess. So this is a historical fiction fantasy story. Ooh, look at that hardback. It's got a sword on it. Hopefully this is not implying that it's gonna stab me right in the heart. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised though, that's happened time and time again. Also in the box was this enamel pin, which I love enamel pins. I am trash for enamel pins. I have way too many of them. If you guys wanna see me do like a flip through of my enamel pin collection, let me know and I'll do that in one of my vlogs because I have way too many. So this one is a sword and it has a ribbon wrapped around it and it says, you will be the death of me. Dun, dun, dun. So like I said, I am partnering with HMH Teen on a giveaway for this book. We are gonna be giving away two hardcover copies of this book along with two character cards. I'll leave the instructions down below as to how to enter. But basically all you have to do is go to HMH Teen's Instagram, follow them, and then go to this post right here and comment on it saying, yo, Jesse the Reader sent me. And voila, you have been entered to win this book. HMH Teen completely takes care of the giveaway, so you'll have to look out on their post to see who won the giveaway. So be sure to go and enter. Testing, testing, is this thing on? Copy. I finished a book. I finished reading. 
The Copper Gauntlet by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. I tabbed and marked so many things in this book, which usually is a sign that I love a book, but I didn't love this one. I really enjoyed the first book in the series, The Iron Trial, which I know that I'm kind of in the minority when it comes to that because I know that a lot of people didn't really love the first book. I personally was a fan. So going into this one, I was pretty stoked. I was like, this is gonna deliver some greatness. And it had some good moments, but for the most part, I was rather underwhelmed. It just didn't captivate me, and I also didn't feel like it was that impressive of a sequel like I needed more of a punch I needed this book to come through and go Poop. but I also just really expect a lot from these two authors they're pros when it comes to writing so I was just kind of expecting a banger when it came to the sequel but I just kind of feel all right about this like there were some good character moments there were some good comedic moments but there was just something missing from this book and I can't quite put my finger on it right now those are just my initial thoughts look out for an upcoming books I've read recently for me to kind of go in deeper as to how I thought because I'm gonna film that video after I've let this kind of settle in a little bit settle Settle down, child, settle down. And next up, I'm diving right into The Cruel Prince. I'm both excited and nervous about this. This was both the most hated and most loved book in 2018, so I'm really curious to find out how I end up feeling about it. Hopefully it's nothing but love, we'll find out. Let's get to reading. It's time for a Christmas haul. I'm only gonna show you guys the bookish things that I got. Let's be real, that's more than likely the only thing you're interested in anyways. I actually asked for no books this year because, uh, <clears throat> you know. I might already have enough books. I'm sure that's got some of you guys going, what the heck? It's just that I have a lot of physical unread books and I don't want to add to that. So I told my family, let's take a year off. I did get one book, but it was a devotional. This book right here, it's called New Morning Mercies, A Daily Gospel Devotional. I've been really bad about doing devotions every morning, so I need to get back into it. So hopefully this will help a boy out. Thanks to my sister Megan for getting this for me. She also got me these bookish socks. What? This is a part of the Happy Socks and Barnes and Noble collaboration collection. And it's got book stacks on book stacks on book stacks on book stacks. Screw wearing these on my feet. I'm gonna wear it as a necklace. Uh -huh. Fashion. Then my aunt got me a book of shirt from Redbubble. On it, it says a day without reading is like, just kidding, I have no idea. <laughs> I feel that on a spiritual level. So those are just some bookish things that I got. You guys should let me know down below in the comments if you got any books for Christmas. Let me know in the comments down below. Reading update, reading update, reading, reading, reading update. I've gotten super deep into The Cruel Prince. It completely sucked me in. It was like, hey, how are you? Come on inside. I actually got to a part in this last night that left me speechless. It got to a point where I had to set the book aside and just stare at the ceiling because I was losing my mind with what had happened. I haven't had a book do that to me in a while where I've been so overwhelmed where I'm just like, I need a break. I need to breathe. I need to process this. Process. But the chapter I read was so overwhelming and so unexpected. The thing is, I don't remember the author kind of planting seeds leading to this moment. So that might've been what played into it being super unexpected because it came out of nowhere, but I don't know. Maybe I missed some things. Maybe I missed some seeds that the author was planting early on. I mean, I wasn't expecting smooth sailing with this book by any means, but I also wasn't imagining the waters to be this rough. Rough, 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 rough. <laughs> another update. It's reading update time. Finished a manga that I have been reading since summer of 2018. It's one that I've just been taking my sweet, sweet, sweet time with. And that is this bind up of One Piece. It contains the first three volumes. The reason this took me so long to read it is not because it's a long manga. Like it's not really that long, but it's one that I've just had on the go for a long time. Like whenever I felt like reading it, I would pick it up, but I didn't ever really make it a priority. I've also just been very intimidated by this series. And so I decided that it would just be best to kind of just move at my own pace to despite the fact that this series is forever long. I'm pretty sure this series is still ongoing and there are already so many volumes for this series, it's mind blowing. How is the creator still coming up with original storylines for this manga? I have no idea, but props to him. Killing the game up in here. So this story follows this boy named Luffy, which his name is Luffy, not Luffy, like I've been pronouncing it all this time. Gotta love when you've been mispronouncing names and then you finally get the real pronunciation and you feel like a Dumbo. Me, me, me. Anyway, Luffy 
has this big dream of becoming the king of the pirates. But one day he accidentally eats this gum gum fruit, which is like this devil enchanted fruit thing. And it ends up giving him this ability to stretch his body like it's never been stretched before. Just think like Laffy Taffy. He can do that with his body. The only thing is, is that there is a very negative after effect of eating the gum gum fruit. And that is the fact that you'll never be able to swim again, which is kind of a big deal when you want to be a pirate. And pirates sail on the water and do a lot of things with water. But he doesn't let that set him back. He continues fighting and chases after his dream of becoming the king of the pirates while also being a human Laffy Taffy. I loved this so much. Like, where has this been my whole life? I loved the character so much throughout this story. He's kind of building up this pirate crew. And I just loved each addition to the pirate crew. I also really liked the action scenes in this manga, which is something that's really hard to impress me with. Because even some of my favorite manga, I don't tend to like the action scenes because they're just super chaotic and really hard to follow. For example, I love My Hero Academia and Tokyo Ghoul. But when it comes to the action scenes in those mangas, I'm not a huge fan. But One Piece nails the action scenes. Also, all the villains that we come in contact with in this volume are so fascinating to me. Like, they're such interesting people, which has me excited for the next few volumes to see what other kind of villains we come in contact with. And lastly, I just have to mention that there was a super sad story arc in here involving a dog. And I'm still not over it. My heart still kind of hurts a little bit just thinking about it. Even though this is a really big commitment, I'm excited to keep carrying on with this manga series. Even if it takes me forever to read all of it, I'm on board. I'm ready for the commitment. I'm just going to take my time with it, though. I'm going to take my sweet time. No rush. Slow and steady is where it's at. I'm going to enjoy the ride. I also watched the first episode of the anime last night, which was really interesting because it kind of has a little bit of a different take on the One Piece story. It doesn't strictly follow the manga. So I'm really curious to those of you who have read the manga and who have watched the show, which do you prefer? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, I've gotten quite a bit deeper into The Cruel Prince, and I'm definitely thinking that I'm going to be able to finish this book this week. Reading all the things winning i finished a book yeah i finished a book so let's talk about it the book i finished is none other than the cruel prince and cruel it was on one hand i loved this book it was so much fun except for all the terrible things that happened to our main character like those scenes were not fun to read about but just in general this was a good entertaining time the world and the politics were super fascinating the characters are fun to read about even though most of them are straight up terrible like the worst the absolute worst. I kinda expected that though because the title has cruel in it. If you're gonna have a title like The Cruel Prince, you're gonna have to deliver some cruel characters and that she did. Holly Black did that. Some of the things that the characters did were pretty questionable and awful. So on an entertainment level, this book is where it's at. It did the dang thing. But on a much more critical level, I'm not sure how I feel about this book. And to be frank with you guys, I feel like I would have to reread this book to fully know how I feel about it. Because examining the structure of this book, I feel like I have some issues with it. There were times when I felt like things came in and rocked the boat a little bit and interrupted the flow of the story. But I think I'm at a point where I'm just going to overlook all that stuff and just be complete trash for this book because that's what's happening. I am trash for the cruel prince. You heard it here first, folks. It's been a while since I've actually felt the pull of a book where I'm like actively wanting to pick up the book and read it at all hours of the day. That's what this book did for me. I might end up regretting saying all of this right now and I might end up changing my mind here pretty soon because I'm still kind of figuring out how I feel, but I think I'm trash for this. I'm just having a competition up in here because it's like I loved it for the entertainment but I'm not sure I liked how it was structured and whatnot so I'm just like what is it how do I feel did I love it am I just okay with it what is this feeling so I need to get up there and kind of sort out some thoughts so that's it for this reading vlog I had a successful reading week I read the cruel prince I read the copper gauntlet and I finally finished the first volume of one piece you guys should let me know down below in the comments if you have read the cruel prince and what your thoughts are on it because I'd love to hear from you and hear what your thoughts are on this book did you end up in the love pool or did you end up in the hate pool let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button, or if you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe, or go and hit that bell icon, and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I hope your day is bright, and that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! Oh!